What's up, Ding Dongs? The comments in the last video were interested in how the PDM works. I guess I'll show you. Open up ECU Master PMU software. This is what you'll see when you open it. So it's not able to detect any devices because I don't have it on right now. So to connect the PMU to the lap or computer, you will need the CAN to USB adapter, which I ordered straight from ECU Master, just because it works and it's easy. You'll need to wire that up. I showed it in the last video how you can wire it up. It's just pins two and seven. You need to solder some wires to them, so then you can connect to CAN one on the PMU. I'm gonna open an existing project, and as you can see, I like to save an iteration. So anytime I do something worthwhile or I you know work on it for a while, I save a new iteration. What you can even do is write little comments. That's just a good thing to do in case you want to go back spot where you had made changes or something. So this is the project tree right here. Everything that is in the software. All the things you have programmed without any sort of organization. This is your project tree where you add all the different functions that the PMU can do. This is the output monitor. These are all your output pins. The weird thing about this is that the pins don't correlate at all to the output number. I wish it did, so I wish like pin one was output one or pin two, output two. Or... This is the analog monitor. These are all the analog inputs. This is just all the data that the PMU collects. So every single voltage for every output, input, and the battery voltage and everything. And this is the variables inspector, which is basically a combination of anything that can change other things. So for example, I have the wiper park switch, which is the input here. I have fan input, which is actually from the ECU, the engine ECU from the link. So like if you have CAN inputs, they will appear here as well. And then you got just logging and stuff. So basically this is all you need. You don't really need to go in the configuration unless you know what you're doing, which I don't. So graph log, log. So I guess I'll just walk you through how to set up, say, a power output. So we're gonna go to power output and you're greeted with this little window here. So here's where you name it. And then you can select either a single, double, or triple pin output. For example, my ignition, because I have Audi R8 coils, which draw a lot of power. I have those on a double pin, which allows me to use so you could use the two pins. So let's say pin that and pin fourth, which allows me now to use 50 amps instead of just 25. So you have 10 25 amp outputs and six 15 amp outputs. This allows you to output up to 75 amps, continuous, not peak. And the, what the difference is, obviously, Max current is continuous, inrush current is momentary current. So you can have the, I don't know how long actually the maximum is. So for example, my fan power has a two, sec two second inrush time because the fans draw a shitload of power when they first turn on. I think they peak at like 85 amps. Yeah, they uh, use a lot of power. Retry count, if say it overcurrents, it will retry every second, or if it shorts or something, it will keep retrying. You can retry forever if you want. Then PWM configuration, this is where you can do, so like you can control the speed of a fan. So say you want to run it at 50%. I don't know how to do it. You can do that here. You can also do soft start. So like the fans, this would actually be good for me to learn to use because the fans, you draw so much current, it would be better to use soft start because then they will draw less current. I just need to figure out the right frequency and stuff because they make a weird noise when I do that. And then here we have default, which is just on or off. As soon as the PMU turns on, this output will turn on. For example, my ECU power does that and the keyboard power are both on by default at all times. Channel is where you can select a channel to control whether an output is on or off. This is the ignition power, so I have an ignition switch on the keyboard. And then we have formula, which I can show you in my fan power. If I go to fan power, I have a formula here. So if the fan switch is on or the fan input is on, then the fan will turn on. You can also do like, say, if the fan switch is on and the voltage is above 12 volts, then turn the fan on. Because maybe you don't want to, you know, drain your battery. Say you hit your switch 
by accident your voltage drops below 12 volts, just turn it off so that it doesn't drain your battery more. Let's do inputs. So inputs basically, same thing, you pick a pin and then you decide whether you want to switch the input to on when it's in a high voltage or on when it's in a low voltage. So for example my brake switch, I have 12 volts running to my brake pedal. When I press the brake pedal it sends 12 volts back to pin A4. So if my voltage is above 3.5 volts in A4, that means turn the brakes on. If I had this at active low, that would mean if my voltage is below 1.5 volts, then the brakes will turn on. So it depends on how things are wired. Fan input is actually the opposite. Link ECU outputs 5 volts when the output is off, and then it outputs 0 volts when the output is on. So that's why I have this on active low. If the voltage drops below 1.5 volts, turn the fan on. If it's above 3.5 volts, turn the fan off. Alright, so that's inputs. You can also do CAN inputs. I haven't figured that out yet, so maybe in a later video I'll figure out CAN stuff, but I can't figure it out right now. Then we have the CAN keyboard, which was actually really easy to set up. I didn't do anything. It just worked. This is also very simple. Click on a switch. Switch correlates to the keyboard and the position. Name it. You make it either a latching switch or a non-latching switch, which just means when you click it, it stays on. This one, when you click it, it doesn't stay on. And then, I don't know what these mean. And then you select for what color you want it to be when it's off, what color you want it to be when it's on, and then you can also control switches with other switches. I don't know why you would do that. And then you click here to select a, select the icon for it. See, I have all these switches programmed, and then I have two left that I don't know what to do with yet. Move on to some modules. So when you go to add here, they have some modules here. So blinkers and wipers. So there's a built-in wiper circuit. Yeah, I don't know how this works. I just set it up so that it stops. So the nice thing about the wiper circuit is there's a wiper switch that I programmed, which is pin uh, A16. When this pin receives more than 0.1 volts, it tells the wiper module that the wipers are in the down. So if the wiper switch is off and it receives this data from the wipers, it will stop the running the wipers. This took me forever to figure out how to, because it depends on like your wipers and your car and stuff, but it's pretty simple, but then again, kind of annoying. And then we also have a blinker switch or a blinker module. Again, same thing, you just, set your outputs and then you set your inputs which are off my keyboard and it controls both of them. You can set your flash time which is a lot better than trying to wire in a flasher. I think that's about it. That's pretty simple. So actually the way I first wired my starter was to j literally run 12 volts through the switch into the starter to activate the solenoid that turns the starter on but I literally saw sparks coming out of the switch. So what I did instead was I'm running chassis power. So I have a chassis power pin that powers a few things like the brake pedal, the starter, and the charger for the tablet. So those are all wired off of one wire off the chassis switch. So what I did was instead made a starter input on pin A6 here. When this receives 12 volts or above 3.5 volts, it sends 12 volts through a 15 amp output to the starter so that there's no sparks, which I think is a little better and it won't wear out the switch. Oh yeah, when you're working on it, make sure you always press make permanent or you can press F2 that actually writes the stuff to the PMU so that when you close the program it doesn't just go revert back to where it was. And then you obviously save in iterations to have the ability to go back to things. So yeah, ding dongs, lots of talking in this video, but pretty interesting topic. These PDMs are kind of new. They're just now coming out and becoming accessible to, you know, not motorsport teams and with regular schlubs like us. So it's pretty exciting to have one and learn the programming it and stuff. So next video, uh, I should probably 
I need to put the intake back on. I already started putting the car back together mostly. So I got the radiator back in. Painted the radiator mounts. Got the hoses back on. I put the old cam covers on for now just so the wire doesn't get chopped up. Or wires don't get chopped up. So I gotta zip tie these away so they don't get destroyed by the belt. I got the water pump plug. It's gonna get installed right right now I'm trying to figure out a different spot to mount the power steering reservoir because I don't like it just sitting here in the engine bay I would like to move it somewhere else just cut the old bracket off grinded the whole thing down this is luckily steel it's a weird steel because it doesn't rust but it is steel so I can weld to it I should a little welder oh the thing that sucks though is I can't use this tablet this tablet does not have OTG which is what I need to get data from the ECU. I gotta get a new tablet that is capable of using OTG, and then I bought a CAN to USB adapter for Link ECU. I'm gonna be doing some link, uh, CAN programming on that. Stay tuned for that. I'm gonna have to learn to do CAN programming. Also, full rear end rebuild is coming. I got all solid bushings, subframe, diff, everything, solid. Bushings for the rear end because this shit flops around way too much. So yeah, lots of stuff coming. Floor gonna get replaced. That I already started. I just never finished. I got poor 15 for it. We'll see how that goes. Remember, dingdongdrift.com. Merch is now available. It's just a simple ding dong drift shirt. More designs are coming. Keep an eye on that. I'll let you guys know at the end of the video. Alright, ding dongs. I'll see you guys next week. I'm actually going on vacation the week that this video comes out. I'm on my honeymoon because I got married this Sunday. Today's Friday, so I get married this Sunday, and we're going on our honeymoon. I might or might not have a video the week after that. Not financial advice, buy AMC and hold and don't sell and just fucking hold. 500K is the floor. No, 800 grand is the floor per share. You'll see. All right, ding-dongs. Stay sweet. I'll see you guys next week or the week after that. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Thanks for watching. America, America, America. Do you have your passport?